Hello viewers, I welcome all of you in today's programs. The big question, today we are going to discuss a very important topic, species interactions and their relationships. The ecological relationships between species. All living organisms live comfortably occupying different types of habits and habitat. No individuals causes any harm. Plants with plants, animal with animals, plants with animals and so on. Member of the different living kingdoms like Protista, Moneria, Algae, Fungi, Planty, and animals. They all live comfortably. There are approximately 18 lakh species of living organisms on this earth. They all give something to the nature, but the only species Homo sapiens to which you and me belongs is the only species which destruct the ecosystem. The father of nations, Bapu, very rightly said, we have enough to meet the need of peoples, but not to fulfill the greed of everyone. Today, we are going to discuss the interrelationships amongst different living organisms. Different organisms, they live together as these organisms, they have their own independent identity and such independent identity is known as a species. Now question arises, what is a species? As all of us belongs to one species that is homo sapiens. So different animal plants, microorganisms, they do. Now, a group of individuals resembling morphologically, which can breed to produce fertile offspring. Plant like Ficus religiosa, commonly known as people. Similarly, the national bird of our country, peafowl belonging to the species Pavo cristatus. So all independent individuals, they have their own morphological, anatomical and other features. Now question arises, what are ecological interactions? Ecological interactions means the interrelationships amongst different living organisms. How, how do they interact? During their interactions, some of them are benefited and some are harmed. If you see that these interactions, they are very helpful in maintaining the balance within the ecosystem. They also help in the flow of energy from one trophic level to another trophic levels. Ecological interactions are the interactions amongst various individuals within a population they interact with each other. Similarly, the interactions can be social, behavioral as well as chemical. If you take example of social interactions, there are number of examples as ants, termites and many other animals like honeybees, they live all together. There are different castes among these animals, but they do welfares for the other species. Similarly, behaviorals, some living organisms, they behave in a similar patterns as the seabirds like stag. For feeding, they just form a group and feed upon the seawater fishes. So stag like birds, they feed collectively and they trap their prey. As far as chemical interaction is concerned, these are some sort of those pheromones, 
hormones are the stimulants which change the behavior of its other member group. Now, let us talk about how many types of interactions are found in nature. As I earlier told, there are generally two types of interactions, positive interactions as well as negative interactions. As the name indicate positive, where the sense comes out that it is something yielding positive beneficials. So, such type of interactions may be within the same species as well as in between two different species of living organism. Here, either one or both the species, they are benefited in the presence of each other. As far as negative interaction is concerned, as the name indicates negative, it is something unhappy. So, in this type of interactions or in this type of association, one partner is certainly harmed and the another is benefited. Now, let us take in detail the first type of interaction that is positive interactions. Positive interaction is of various kinds. First of all, it is coexistence. Second one, proto-cooperations, commensalism, mutualism. So, these four type of interactions which are beneficial to their partner. Let us take each of these interactions independently and in details. The first positive interaction is coexistence. As the word clear its meaning coexistence, when two species they live together. So, they are for the beneficial purposes of each others. One is benefited, other is neither harm nor benefited as well as both can live independently. As we have a very interesting example of mustard crop and wheat crop. Generally, the mustard crop is grown on the periphery or even in mixing with the wheat crop. Mustard crop protect the wheat crop from the pest, which is generally eat the stem of wheat plant. Now, here mustard crop, it create a barrier it stop the entry of the pest. So, here both these species wheat as well as mustard, they can live independently also, but here the wheat crop is benefited without causing any harms and mustard crop is neither benefited nor harmed. Next type of positive interaction is protocooperation. Here both species are benefited when together none of them is harmed when separated. So, both in their association they are benefited, but they can independently live separately. There is no conditions, they, there is no obligations on each others. As we have examples like buffalo and cattle aggregates, soil microbes and plant roots. In the first case, as buffalo is in a field for grazing, so number of insects they moved with the disturbance of the grasses. The aggress sitting over buffalo, it pick up these small insect and feed upon them. Now, when there is any attack of any predators, this buffalo make this aggregate make the buffalo to be ready. So, it give an alarming situation, so the buffalo is also benefited. Similarly, the soil microbes and plant roots, so they live all together. Soil microbes, they make the soil loose and make the nutrients and water to absorb properly in the root of these plants. So, here both are benefited one way or the other. The next is commensalism. Commensalism is an association between two species which live together. One is benefited and other is neither benefited nor harmed, but they live together. As in case of 
epiphytes and epigones, shark and pilot fish. Here in the first pictures, if you see, there are some plant, they live on the large tree trunk without causing any damage. Now here the plant on which these epiphytes grow, they are not getting any disturbance or not getting any harm, but epiphytes, they grow perfectly on these. Similarly, shark fish and pilot fish. Pilot fish are small fish which follows shark fish, which is carnivores found in large sea. Whenever any shark fish, it feed upon small or the large prey, so small bits of foods, they are generally scattered from the mouth of the shark. And the pilot fish which are following the shark fish, they pick up these small bits of food. So in this case, the pilot fish is benefited and the shark, it is not harmed, not benefited. Next is mutualism. We all have mutual understanding for our beneficial or other purpose. We mutually understand each and other words. It is a totally obligatory and permanent association between two species in which both these species are benefited. So mutualism is a type of associations which are totally 100% interdependent on each other. Like the sea anemone and hermit crab, rhizobium and root of leguminous plant, and finally the lichen. Now these three different type of animals, they live differently, but they live totally on interdependence of each other partner. If you take the first case of sea anemone and hermit crab, the sea anemones, it rests upon the carapace of hermit crab. Hermit crab is killed, hermit, hermit crab kill upon its prey and the break food and remains foods are picked up by the sea anemones. In respect to that, the hermit crabs also take the sea anemone to the new feeding ground. But what hermit crab get from the sea anemone? Sea anemone protects the hermit crab from predators. So its tentacles, they keep the other predators away from hermit crab. Similarly, rhizobiums and root of leguminous plant, the bacterium rhizobiums, it lives in the root of leguminous plant and it makes small nodules which convert the atmospheric nitrogen and change it into nitrate, which increase the fertility of soil. So here both rhizobiums as well as leguminous plants, they benefited. Similarly, lichens. Lichens are those plants which live in associations with algae and fungi. Now here algae, they synthesize the food and the fungi, it gives a large area to the algae. So both, they cannot live separate. All the orchids, they belong to this category. Now, the second part of the topic, which is very important, negative interactions. As earlier I told, that negatives give something very, very bad means something is going to be harmed. So negative interactions are of various type. First, amenicillism, competition, parasitism, predation, and exploitation. So now let's take in detail each of these interactions. First of all, let's take Amenselism. Amenselism is a type of interaction between two different species in which one species does not allow other species to survive in its vicinity or in its surrounding. So one species is totally dominant. It removes the other species. As in case of Isornia, which is commonly known as 
water hyacinth and you can see in all fresh water bodies all over the country where this water hyacinth is present it hardly allow any other species of plant aquatic plant in particular to grow in its surroundings so it dominate that ecological niche similarly the very dangerous grass commonly known as congress grass parthenium it also have the same effect beside this effect it hardly allow any other species of plant to grow in its surrounding and it has almost replaced all other subspecies of plant throughout the country as well as this parthenium it has its allelopathy effect this is the parthenium grass which is found generally on all roadsides railway tracks and whatsoever the lawn and other places mostly the all the grassland ecosystem have been disturbed by this plant next negative type of interaction is our competitions we all compete for our survival we struggle for existence we struggle to get first in the class we struggle we compete to get gold medal in different games and different so the animal world also they struggle for their existence and compete with other species two species struggle for their better existence for the resources competitions is of two types interspecific which is generally amongst the member of the same species interspecific this competition is amongst member of the different species the interspecific competitions is less dangerous as the number of individuals for the same target is few but if the target or the goal or the food is less and the member of that species are in large number then it's going to be very dangerous in that case the weaker species weaker member of that populations are supposed to be come out from that system as far as interspecific competition is concerned when need is similar requirements are similar but the different living organism they have the same type of needs so here different individuals different species they struggles they compete to achieve the same goal so here when goal or the food or the material or the resources they are in a very small amount but the different species they are large numbers it's very dangerous poor ones smaller ones and weaker ones either they are killed or they are supposed to be moved to a safer place next is parasitism parasitism is again a very interesting behavior in negative type of interactions in parasitism one organism draw water or nutrients from the other here the source for one partner is food here two partners they live together as in case of human and gut parasite and cuscuta you see the endoparasite which are found in human intestines they just live within the human intestines and feed upon the food supply to the humans or whatsoever the food is present in the human intestines they are safe there and they they are getting proper food there they are even protected they are totally dependent on their partners here the partner on which this animal depends is known as host and host is generally larger in size as far as the other partner which is benefited here like worm ascaris or tape worms they are smaller in size similarly in plant cuscuta which is commonly known as amarbale yellow in colors and very commonly found on 
Jesus plant and in common language we call it bed. Cascuta it absorbs the nutrients of its host plant from its modified roots known as hostia. So, it sucks all the nutrients from its host plant and is benefited. Now, in this case, in the case of parasitism, the host is always harmed and the parasite which absorbs or which take the nutrition that is always benefited. Next is predation. Predation is just reverse to the parasitism. Predation in which one organism kills and eat the other. Here, the death of other partner is certain as we will go through these pictures, tiger and deer, eagle and snake, drosera and insects, nepenthes and insects. You see, in all these four pictures, tiger is a larger species, larger partners and the prey which is a deer, here in this case a cheetah is being eaten by the tigers. Here the tiger killed the prey and then it eat it. In the second case, eagle and snake, the eagle killed the snake and eat it. The smaller partner is always harmed, it is killed. In the third case, drosera and insects, drosera plants, it opens and it pick up the insect, kill it and digest it and absorb it. Similarly, the nepenthes, which is commonly known as pitcher plants, it keeps open its lid and whenever any insect come to it, it is captured, lid is closed, insect is finally killed, digested and absorbed. So, you see in this interactions, predations, it is totally to kill one partner. The kill partner is totally harmed, the other partner is always benefited. Next type of negative interaction is exploitation. We are all being exploited. Here one species enslave the other species for driving benefit. In the first case ants and aphids nest parasitizing in birds like quail the Saisongesters cuckoo. You see, in the first pictures, the ants, which are colonial insects, live in groups, make large mound of mud. They collect and invite the aphids in their nest. They feed these aphids on cellulose. Cellulose help in growing some fungi. So, aphid feed on fungi and this aphid it lick a very nutritious substance which is known as honeydew. As in the pictures you are looking the small insect, the small ants, it is just licking and eating upon the dew secreted by the aphids. In the lower side if you see that a number of these aphids, they are feeding upon the fungal. Similarly, then social parasitism, birds like quail, here in the picture you are looking one bird which is a social parasite and this bird, it lays eggs, its own legs, eggs in the nest of crow nest. The male partner which is in the pictures it disturbs the incubating other partners that is crow. It disturbs that crow, the crow come out from the nest just to keep the female male partner away. In the meantime when the crow come back by the times the female partners lay its eggs. So, such type of exploitation similarly in area where the crow like opium is grown. In those area again the opium resin is taken by some special type of human beings, men and these men they are basically slave of that very particular man. 
So, friends, today we discuss the interactions amongst different type of animals and plants, microorganisms. First, we took the positive interactions and then we took the negative interactions. This is all about today's discussions. If any one of you have any questions, any queries, you are welcome. Excuse me, sir. I just want to have one query. What is the actual relationship between the soil microbes and the rhizomes and the roots, actually, which you have taught? Roots of the plants. Roots okay. of the plants. Thank you. Actually, microbes, they loosen the soil of the root. Once the soil get loose from the root, so it makes the nutrients and the water more permeable toward the roots. It helps in more nutrition to the plant roots. Any other questions? Would you please explain the difference between proto-cooperation and mutualism? In proto-cooperation, when two partners of different species, they live together, one partner is benefited in the presence of other partners, but both can live independently also. It is not obligatory. Other partner, neither it is harm nor benefited. Here, one partner is benefited. The presence of other partner is hardly matters. What is the next part of your question? Mutualism. In mutualism, the understanding is totally mutually between the two different partners. It is obligatory. They cannot live separately. As I told you, in the case of uh, hermit crab and sea anemone. So, they cannot live separate. If one partner is lost in this case, automatically the lost partner will find out the other place. Similarly, if I add one more example to these questions, you must have seen the pollinations in plants. Insects and flower. Insects are benefited by getting nectars and pollen grains, while flowers they are benefited by pollination, by cross pollination. So, both the partners, both the individuals, they are benefited. Any other questions? Thank you very much. So, today we discuss about these species interactions and in the next topic we will talk about ecological pyramids. Thank you very much.